Did Luka Doncic secretly get Kristaps Porzingis traded, prematurely ending what could have been a star guard big man duo for the Dallas Mavericks for years to come? Recently, headlines have been made that the Mavericks traded Kristaps Porzingis in 2022 because Porzingis and Luka did not get along and the Mavericks chose Luka. Now currently, in 2024, both Luka and Kristaps have tried to downplay this beef. In fact, they've tried to squash it entirely, saying they have nothing but good feelings towards each other now. Don't get to it. They do not like Porzingis in Dallas. Luca. So you can not, speak for speak yeah, to that. Luca did familiar. not like playing with him. There is an actual beef there. That was a general person me twice in my life, so I don't know how he would do that. Uh, but me and KB have a good relationship. Keyword now. Because if we travel back in time to when they were actually playing on the same team, we find this video from the 2021 season where this story gets a lot more interesting. Because while watching this gameplay, we find several, several plays where Luka completely ignores passing to a wide open Kristaps Porzingis, already suspicious. And at this time, it was reported by Stephen A. Smith that what I'm hearing from my sources in Dallas, Porzingis probably needs to go because he's seems to be somebody that's jealous of Luka Doncic and resentful of the cachet he has compared to Porzingis. And here is the kicker. According to Luka's 2022 passing statistics, Luka passed the ball to Kristaps at a rate of just 4.5 times a game. Just the seventh most on the Mavericks roster that season behind other bigs such as Maxi Kleber and Dwight Powell. And for his part, Kristaps Porzingis shot just 37.7% on those Luka passes. At the time this trade took place, it was heavily rumored that Luka did have a hand in it, and as we dig deeper, I think we can all agree, there is more here. Rick was like, stop being babies. <laughs> and you go, why don't you tell Luka to stop being a baby? And Rick goes, hey Luka, stop being a baby. I think it's when you're young, you just, oh, I'm gonna prove this, or I'm gonna, like, ego involved and all that, but. So what's up, Mike here, and Kristaps actually recently spoke on his time in Dallas, and it is also very apparent in that interview that something was up. Luca and Kristaps were clearly not best friends when they were playing with each other. It was far from that, which we are going to get into, but first, we need to talk more about our stone-cold evidence, which comes in the form of passing numbers. In the 2020 season, their first year together, Luca passed to Kristaps 11.6 six times a game, the most out of any member on the Dallas Mavericks by a notable margin. In 2021, these numbers would plummet, with Luka now throwing the ball to KP just 7.2 times a game, the fourth most on the team, but at least Kristaps was his go-to big. Then came the 2022 season, then came Luka barely passing to Kristaps at all, just 4.5 times a game, and then came the Dallas Mavericks horrible trade. Kristaps Porzingis for Davis Bertans and Spencer Dinwiddie. I love this deal, absolutely for the Mavericks, no question about it. Because you look at a guy like Chris House Porzingis, I know he got nicknamed the unicorn because, you know, he's so unique, but he's also the unicorn because you hardly ever see him. A seven foot three all-star for a man in Bertans, who in 2024 averaged 8.8 .8 points per game on less than 40% shooting from the field. And a man in Spencer Dinwiddie, who put up 6.8 points per game on under 40% shooting for the Lakers. But guys, before we continue, I am very excited to thank our friends at DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. We're in the final round of the playoffs but there is still plenty of time to get in on the NBA action with my partners at DraftKings Sportsbook. If you're new to DraftKings, you've got to check this out. New customers, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, use promo code CORZEMBA, bet $5, and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. And if sports betting is not yet available in your state, do not worry. You can still join in in all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. So make sure to go download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Again, new customers, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, use promo code CORZEMBA, bet $5, $5 and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That is personally what I'll say, just an incredible deal. That's promo code CORZEMBA, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Again, thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. And for now, let's get back into the video. The Mavericks got extremely lucky in this deal and were able to salvage this Porzingis nightmare by moving Dinwiddie for Kyrie Irving, while Kyrie was seen as a negative asset at the time. I believe that the Dallas Mavericks are the worst place on earth for Kyrie Irving to go. There's not enough ball to go around. I believe this is subtraction by addition for Dallas. Wow. I believe it's a wow. terrible move. It is very similar to when the Grizzlies traded away Pau Gasol, got back an extremely overweight Marc Gasol in the process, but then watched 
rushed as Marc Gasol became an all-star for them. We do have to wonder though, what if Dallas had locked up their core of Jalen Brunson, Luka Doncic, and Kristaps Porzingis? That is a scary thought. Of course we know it did not work out and the reason it did not work out, well at least the first reason we have here comes down to ego. We need to remember that at the time Kristaps Porzingis was traded to the Dallas Mavericks, Kristaps was coming off an injury but he was also a young all-star while Luka was about to win rookie of the year but he had not yet made his incredible year to leap which means Kristaps thought he was coming into a 1A 1B type of situation with Luka until Luka became a superstar and it is here where Kristaps himself speaks about the ego involved. Do you feel like the, there was a little bit of a young bull specifically with like the Luka dynamic like a pissing contest? <laughs> Early on, for sure. Early on, for sure. Like, maturity, communication on both of our parts should have been better. Not a full Shaq and Kobe type beef. However, there is something here. We did have two young stars. We did have two young big egos. Most importantly, though, I think we have other two factors that need to be mentioned. Number one, we have to mention right now that throughout his Dallas career, KP was plagued with injuries and that hurt his team chemistry. Learning to play with Luka and to be the second option behind Luka after being the number one option in New York definitely would have required more Kristaps and Luca on court time to get any problems out of the way. Number two though, and perhaps more importantly, at the time, head coach Rick Carlisle could not figure out a Luca and Porzingis offense. In KP's words, reflecting back on it, I just should have just said, okay, this is what you want. Like I will do like that to the best of my ability. But at that point still, I was a little bit young and I was doing it, how you say, like out of spite. On purpose, I will not move from this corner. Like that, that, little, that little bit of mindset, you know? It is not often that the number two scorer on a playoff team is told to go stand in a corner for an entire playoff series. But we heard it right there. Porzingis was not only told to go stand in the corner, but this also caused some real animosity within it. Seemingly for good reason, as in the 2021 series against the Clippers, Luka averaged 35.7 points per game on 28 shots a game, while Porzingis averaged 13.1 points on just 10.3 shots. These numbers were dramatically lower than the 20.1 points Kristaps averaged on 15.9 shots a game in the regular season and can you blame kp for getting mad after he was completely taken out of the offense and put into the corner while luca took 28 shots a game when you combine the clips of luca seemingly deciding to not pass the ball to kp on purpose along with the fact that in the 2021 playoffs luca shot about three times more than Kristaps a game you can see why Kristaps would be a little bit irked about this situation with the washington wizards in 2023 after he was traded kp averaged a career high 23.2 points per game with 8.4 rebounds a game on very efficient numbers. He was clearly missed by the Dallas Mavericks who won just 38 games in 2023 and missed the playoffs. In theory, Dallas would have been a much better team with Kristaps playing. However, it is here where this situation gets a bit deeper as the on-court stats between Luka and Kristaps actually tell us they were terrible together and they do show us why the offense may have gone away from KP in the playoffs. The truth is, the pair of Luka and Porzingis simply did not perform on paper. Taking a look at the Mavericks' two-man lineups in 2020, we find that KP ranks as just Luka's sixth best teammate when it comes to net points per 100 possessions, trailing Maxi Kleber by a little and Dwight Powell by a lot. Things would get even worse in the 2021 season as in terms of two-man pairings, James Johnson was the only teammate Luka played worse with. Yes, Kristaps and Luka combined for a minus 1.6 points per 100 possessions. This combo also had the worst field goal percentage of any two-man duo Luka played with, while they also led this list of 10 two-man combinations in turnovers. I wasn't that much into analytics and numbers. If somebody, I think, presented it to me the right way and said, you're going to be way more effective doing this, like kind of explain it to me better. I think that would have made a difference a little bit. The question is here, do we blame Luka? Do we blame the head coach? Do we blame injuries? What exactly happened? Especially because strangely, this was not the first team to give up on Kristaps and trade him for an underwhelming trade package. As while Porzingis was rehabbing from an ACL injury during the 2019 season, the New York Knicks traded him in just his fourth year, despite the fact that in his third season, before the injury, KP had been named an all-star with 22.7 points per game, and up until that point, many saw him as the future cornerstone of the New York Knicks. But then, Woj reported that Kristaps was not happy in New York and that he left the Knicks with the impression that he prefers to be 
traded, which meant the Knicks ended up trading Kristaps in a package that revolved around Dennis Smith Jr., which ended up becoming a horrible, horrible trade for the Knicks, as in his first season with Dallas in 2018, Dennis Smith Jr. actually finished fifth in the Rookie of the Year voting and was starting to get young Russell Westbrook comparisons, but then by just the 2020 season, Dennis Smith Jr. was only averaging 5.5 points per game for the Knicks. He is, unfortunately, a colossal bust. At the time, Knicks fans hated this trade. The question is, why did New York give up on Kristaps so easily? Well, according to reports at the time, Kristaps was unhappy that the Knicks were unwilling to give his brother, Giannis, a bigger role with the team. Mark Berman stated Giannis, who had a modest European playing career, wanted to be a bigger part of the Knicks team too. According to sources, Giannis asked for jobs for some members of Porzingis' entourage, but nothing ever materialized. Giannis wanted the kingdom. One source familiar with the situation told the Post. What do we make of this? Well, for one thing, before Dallas, Porzingis already showed himself capable of being unhappy enough to request out, which has to be notable. And the fact that his brother was fully involved in this drama is just an unfortunate situation that no team really wants to be a part of. In 2017, Giannis himself was quoted as saying, you can't escape the reality and the Knicks must also see that. From their point of view, Chris Stops is the focal point at the moment, so you cannot upset him much or otherwise. At the end of the season, he will say, it's not so cool here. Threatening words, and in Dallas, we know for sure Porzingis did not have a good time playing with that roster. So with those comments, with everything we've covered, I think we can come to a definitive conclusion here. While on paper, Kristaps and Luka looked like a good match, they simply were not. This was not a Shaq and Kobe situation where the two disliked each other off the court, and then on the court, they put aside their differences, and they won basketball games. When Kristaps and Luka were on the court together, Luka did not pass Kristaps stops the ball and they played off this may have led to some rumblings between the two players but i do not think it led to any definitive trade requests if anything it appears that rick carlisle was Kristaps' biggest enemy if he had one in dallas so did luca and Kristaps like playing with each other no the question we're left with is if Kristaps did not get injured in dallas if luca and him shared the court more together if they had perhaps played with each other in different times during their career would they have figured it out would they have unlocked their tremendous superstar our duo potential i want to know what you think down below in the comments thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video i think you are going to enjoy this video on luka Doncic right here or perhaps you miss anthony edwards and want to hear more about ant that video is also on top if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications if you're already subscribed thank you so much for supporting you are awesome we all know it and as always have an awesome day and cue that music